Hello students, welcome to Parameter to Tech. So this is our first lecture in CSS series. So we already have covered our HTML portion. If you haven't watched that, first watch that, then come here, okay? So now uh, from uh, today onwards, we will uh, start our CSS journey. For first, I uh, just write uh, some basic code here. Hello, and I save this. Let's see, it's working. Yeah, it's working fine. So now uh, we will see how we can apply CSS in all these things. Okay. So before applying CSS, I uh, I want uh, to uh, I want me, uh, to make you sure that what a CSS is. What do you uh, what do you say about CSS? So let me tell you, CSS is somewhat which gives you a design. Okay. CSS is somewhat which gives you a design. So this this page what you see here is displayed. Okay. So when you create on this in HTML, it looks ugly. When, but when you apply CSS in it, it becomes modern looking. Now you can see that it becomes modern looking. So for a modern looking website, you have to apply CSS. Okay. So better we do something, then we will understand more about this. So I come here again. Okay, and first, let me, uh, let me tell you, there are three ways. Okay. There are three ways of defining CSS. Okay, the first way is your inline CSS. Second is your external CSS. Third is your internal CSS. So what is the difference between inline, external and internal? So when we talk about inline, so it means in the same line, we write the CSS property and it will be applied. For example, I just show you, uh, we are dealing with the inline here. Okay, if I write some paragraph here, and if I write something called hello para, okay, and I want inline property or inline CSS to be applied in here. So I simply write something called a style tag, and I simply write something called color. Let's go with red. And if I save this, you can see that hello para with a color of red. So this is how you apply your internal CSS. Uh, sorry, inline CSS. The inline in inline. Again, okay. in inline you can give all this property, but this is not a good way of writing this because there are many more things. Okay, there are many more properties. If you write uh, all these things in this line, it will look hazy. Suppose I have 10, uh, 10 properties I want to apply on this. Just understand, just think about that. Ten, uh, if I have uh, 20 or 30 line of codes and inside every line, I want 10 line of CSS. It becomes 200 and 300 messy codes. So better you apply, you go with uh, the best thing is external. Or if you don't, uh, if you have little less code, you better go with internal CSS. It depends upon you what thing you apply, but uh, I would say I would recommend to go with external CSS. Okay, just remember inline CSS takes the highest priority. The priority, every sort of thing, the priority, uh, the uh, uh, the thing that uh, which uh, ID and classes and all these things that we already have told you, we will discuss in live class that how a priority will take place. What uh, what is the means? Uh, what is the value of priority of every section that we have? But for now, we will just understand the the core concept, the core idea that how it is working. Okay. So we have seen inline CSS. Yeah, you can apply multiple things after color. You can go with background color, margin padding. We will see all these things. But just understand for now, for applying inline CSS, you just have to write type style and just give the color as red. All right, so we are done with inline. So next thing is your internal. Uh, before external, I just recommend you to go with internal. Okay, so I just give it to two. First, let me show you internal, then we will move back to external. Okay. So uh, in internal CSS, okay, I just write internal. So for applying internal CSS, I again write a para here. Okay, and this time I'm applying a class in this class of para. Okay, 
so hello para all right so if i come here i can see uh, simply see hello para and i want to apply some css in this so for uh, applying internal css you have to come here and have to type style tag uh, uh, okay and in this style whatever you write it will be applied okay so first uh, you can if i write p here because nothing nowhere else p is there so if i write p just understand if i write only p so whenever i apply i write p uh, i'll i'll tell you first i just write p okay and uh, let me give a color so what color i should give so let's go with uh, aqua i don't know so i save this and when i come here you can see an aqua color is coming in this if you can't see i just increase the font size yeah now you can see that hello para of this color okay uh, if you want to change colors uh, we will see all these things uh, let me change with some other colors green okay so that it look visual ah yeah this looks good for now and i guess green only okay yeah so now uh, you can see that i have given a para okay and i have given a color of green now suppose uh, i again write a para and i got another para another para here so what will happen uh, this paragraph taking this uh, color as green and this paragraph again takes that color green now see here this is taking green and this is also taking green color so but i want this only this para to be green i don't want this para to be green okay so how are you going to do that instead of using p use class here okay so write just write dot dot para so remember uh, this is uh, this is something called element selector okay uh, we will talk about this so if i write dot para and if i save this so dot represents your class this class is represented by your dot so now you can see that hello para will take this color green but not this another para now if i come here you can see that hello para is taking the color but not another para so similarly if you want to means uh, rearrange all these things you have to use selectors so i hope you understood what internal css internal means in in this file only you just write the, all these properties and that properties will be applied here so this is how internal css works so i just comment this value for now so let's move to another thing which is called external css and uh, for bigger websites or for bigger sites okay always prefer external css so let me write uh, first let me uh, i just remove all these things for now for uh, external css you have to type link colon css and hit enter so now you can see href equals to style dot css instead of style dot css if you want you can put uh, any other thing for now i am just writing a style dot css so here i just remove uh, okay uh, in this css file i'll just create a file which is called style dot css okay so see uh, style dot css will work in this because this is in the same file but suppose it's uh, this style dot css is uh, uh, it is in some other files then you have to give the proper location of that file okay so now yeah uh, with the, with a uh, practice you will understand more of this concepts but for now just understand that you have to give the path location of this because it's in the same file you just directly can access this so now if i save this okay and uh, in this external css i write uh, every sort of thing i write paragraph here okay hello para again all right and uh, i save this for now <laughs> and in this style dot css if i write para and again if i write something called color green okay if i save this now you can see that color becomes green hello para again so what happens here so i have given a paragraph okay and i have given hello para again but what happens here that i have given a link 
and I have given a reference of a style.css means that uh, this CSS file this is called external this is what your external CSS is okay this is what your external CSS is so it means that it's taking an external file external file of style.css and accessing all these CSS properties in this okay it's taking uh, from a style.css is taking all this uh, all this portion of css part and just applying on this so if you have doubt okay if i come here if i write something called background color okay background color let's go with the teal color okay and if i save this now you can see that in background there should be a teal color okay this is just a color you can go with any color any other color you can go directly go with red you can see red color is applied here so whatever you do whatever uh, property you should apply in this it will take in, uh, it will be taken by this okay so same okay if i write some classes or some uh, ids something like this so there there is a uh, id i left let's give me an id of para here okay and uh, hello id para okay so i'm just writing id para and i'm taking some suppose i'm writing something like for para oh uh, sorry for id you have to use has okay so if i write has and write para the name should be same okay if you write para here you should have to write para here has para means that you are talking about this para all right and in this if i come here and if i write something called color uh, suppose blue okay and if i save this now you can see that color blue will be applied in this but one thing that i want to show you that color blue is applied and the paragraph thing is also applied what happen is that the color is overwritten from green to blue but the background color remains the same the background color is also applied you can see that the background color is also applied in the first one also and the second one also but the color the color earlier was green okay that color has been overwritten by blue color so this is how uh, okay this is how your ids or something like this work in the next section in the next video we will talk about something called css selectors in that selectors portions we will talk about what is an id uh, what is class what is grouping selectors how you select all these things but for now this uh, this is uh, good enough for now just uh, go through it once just practice it three types of css inline external internal just have a look on this and in the next section we will in the next video we will talk about much much more details about this so thank you for watching just uh, stay safe and uh, if you have any doubts uh, comment me down comment below